Hi, today we are looking at this. Lithoplanes, lithopani, lithopolypoda? I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but we're looking at how you can convert a 3D model to a 2D image and get some pretty cool results. So I stumbled up on this feature when using a FlashForge printer. So if you have a FlashForge printer, which you probably do because you saw my awesome reviews around here, um, this is, is built in into FlashPrint and I'm going to show you how to do it. But there's tons of different softwares that you can do this for free. Here are some examples and a link down below to an Instructable, which is great, uh, which shows how to do it in like Ultimaker and Thingiverse Customizer. So even if you don't have a FlashForge printer, you can still get this result super quick, super easy. Let's just head into the computer and get going. All right, so in FlashPrint, when you load a model, you can actually see that we have bitmap, PNG, JPEG uh, uh, available. So I'm just gonna load up a selfie of me. Uh, you can choose here that darker parts of the image it will be thicker. The base is like the base of the model, basically. And maximum thickness is how wide the, the width and the spectrum of the image will be. I'm gonna choose a pretty small size here because uh, we just wanna have a sample. So as soon as you click OK, you will see an image up here or actually an SDL file. Um, so you can see how it took the gray areas and made it like in different thicknesses. It looks a little bit weird here actually, but um, I'm just gonna change it to Finder and print it so we can see how it looks. So for settings, I'm gonna choose with high. I'm gonna choose a rough because this is a really thin wall. So you can see here my settings, nothing fancy. In my case, I'm just gonna switch up the temperature a little bit. There we go, we can print it, looks cool sliced as well. And uh, let's head into the time lapse. A little bit tricky for your printer to do this because it is such a thin wall. You can choose some different modes as well as uh, boxes, cylinders, and so on. I mean, the results from this side on a thick uh, PLA that is not supposed to be transparent is still pretty cool. But as soon as you turn it around, it's looking really, really cool. I'm really impressed. Here you can see when we are lighting it with a flashlight just to get a little bit more perspective on how it would look if this was like a lamp frame or some sort of holder. So I'm, I'm really pleased with the results. Uh, it does look a little bit weird on the side though. And that's, that's well, that's just what it is. Here you can see again from a different angle, looks really cool. Uh, I have a little bit of a joker face, but that's just what it is. So I'm trying a different version as well. One that is in inside and one is outside. So two of the same, it's just that I'm choosing that bright parts will be out and dark in on the other, on the other one. Or oh, sorry, yeah, the other way around. I'm just putting these together, running those in a more transparent material. So you can see here the printing. It's like yeah, it's building up. It does look a little bit worse when you have a semi-transparent material. So I would actually recommend using uh, just a thinner model, but with um, translucent, sorry, um, op opaque materials. The right one is still looking pretty cool. Uh, it's a little bit thicker base. So I guess the difference is more uh, because on the left side, we had a little bit too much transparency. In this case, the one with the thinner base looks better when it's more transparent. You can see here as well, thinner looks better when, when light is shining through. So I still think that the opaque model is looking the best. I will do some more attempts on this one. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to see them. So if you want to try this for yourself, I recommend this guide that I will link to down below and you would be up and running in a few seconds. Oh, and yeah, as promised, I can just want to show you here that you can make some other models as well, like a tube, for example. And you should probably adapt your image a little bit. That looks pretty cool. Now, uh, I said before that you can use another software. The thing is that FlashPrint is free and you can save a file here as an SDL. So you're covered if you want to do this in FlashPrint and don't want to use another software. So go ahead, download FlashPrint and I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Make sure you follow me on the links down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.